a franchise whose name derived from a street racing group in 2000 from Japan that went on and pioneered the open world street racing genre, released four games throughout its entire lifespan, and sold a total of 18.5 million copies. It was also the second best franchise for Rockstar Games, just behind Grand Theft Auto. But then, it just completely disappeared, never to be seen again. No remaster, no new entry, no nothing. And this is the Midnight Club Iceberg. By the time that you're watching this video, there may have been other icebergs made by other people about Midnight Club. But in this video, I'm going to be covering an iceberg that I made myself, along with the assistance of other people. If you don't know how an iceberg works, you have an iceberg and you also have pieces of information, facts, about a certain topic of literally anything. And it goes from the top, which contains information that pretty much everyone knows, or majority of the people know. And it goes down to more obscure, less known, or sometimes dark pieces of information that not everyone knows or maybe nobody knows. Before the video starts, I just want to mention that if I got anything wrong out of the information that I'm going to be sharing, correct me in the comments. And if there's anything that I didn't add on the iceberg, mention it as well. With that out of the way, enjoy the video. Dub is a North American magazine that covers the custom car urban culture and also features celebrities. They also were in Midnight Club 3 and Midnight Club Los Angeles, but with Midnight Club 3, they were the reason that they influenced the franchise more to a mainstream audience. Midnight Club as a franchise is notorious for its difficulty curve. Regardless of which of the four games that you're playing, the beginning is always going to be easier, but the more that you progress and the more difficult it gets with the AI and traffic, both of them together, the police being a nuisance, it gets complicated. Very complicated. Not to say that they're flat out impossible, but they're just difficult to pass. With enough practice, you can get through them. Every Midnight Club game features the police and each representing the city that they're from. Except for Midnight Club Los Angeles, the police are just there to give you the immersion and the sense of being in a police chase during a race. They don't actually arrest you and sometimes it can be an annoyance. Unless if you crash your car too hard. In Midnight Club LA however, they actually chase you after completing an event and they can also chase you in free roam. And you can also get arrested or let's just say you're getting fined with a ticket. By force. Midnight Club so far only has four games, and this is more about the fact that half of those games feature unlicensed vehicles, and the other half feature licensed vehicles. Street Racing and Midnight Club 2 feature unlicensed vehicles that are originally created vehicles by the developers that are based off real life cars, and the other half is just basically real life cars. Midnight Club Los Angeles is so far the only Midnight Club game to feature a day and night cycle, which also means the game could also be set in daytime rather than just nighttime. Therefore, it could also be called Midday Club as opposed to the game's title. And that also goes to the PSP port of Midnight Club LA and seeing the Midnight Club 2 LA map during the daytime. Midnight Club 3 had a Tokyo expansion almost a year after the original game came out. Some of the things that Dub Edition Remits brought was a map expansion to Tokyo, which is basically an updated map for Midnight Club 2, new vehicles, music, and even an entire campaign that you can do in Tokyo, separate from the main campaign of the main game. Midnight Club still cancels Souls is a term originated from a YouTuber by the name of Black Panther that he started a Let's Play on Midnight Club Los Angeles back in 2018, but has never bothered to finish it. This term also started spreading on other YouTube channels that started to make a Let's Play on the game, but other people, unlike Black Panther, finished the game. The term also extends to the Midnight Club franchise as a whole since Rockstar hasn't released a new entry since 2008, and there's also a YouTube channel with the same name of the term. Subscribe to him. Oh, if anyone asks, the word souls means sorry. Really, it means sorry. 
The South Central DOC was a map expansion that came to Midnight Club Los Angeles in 2009. What came with the expansion was a map expansion to the South Central area, new cars, new music, new missions that you can do in the area, and even a new garage that you can go into. Some notable landmarks in the area are the Crenshaw Plaza and the LA Memorial Coliseum. This was a thing that you can actually do in Midnight Club Street Racing and in Midnight Club 2. Unfortunately, you can't do this in Midnight Club 3 in Los Angeles because they feature real life vehicles. Manufacturers basically won't be too fond of you running over pedestrians in their cars. All of the Midnight Club games have been backwards compatible with other consoles. All the three mainline PS2 games being backwards compatible with the PS3, Midnight Club Los Angeles being backwards compatible with the Xbox One and the Series XS. Even both Midnight Club LA Remix and the PSP port of Midnight Club 3 are playable on the PS Vita. The name Midnight Club derived from the Midnight Club, which was a club that was founded in 1982, took off in 1987 with high-ranking individuals with a lot of money, went quiet in 1999, and came back to the public eye in 2020. What the club was basically about, it contained members that either drove in exotic cars or in JDM cars that can also be heavily modified to race in the Wangang Highway between Tokyo and Yokohama. Or in other words, Test out those modifications and see how fast can these cars go in the highway in the middle of the night when there is little to no traffic. As far as how the club got disbanded in 1999, they were involved in an accident that revolved in at least one fatality and a lot of people getting injured in the process, which made them go quiet for about two decades. There's also other sources that mention that the Midnight Club was still around, with some members still racing, even after that accident. And there's also other members that basically gave up the midnight life and move on with their lives. Either way, the club was basically still around during those two decades of silence. Just not out there like they used to. Here's one source that shows a bit of detail about that accident that happened in 1999. After those two decades of silence, they came back in 2020 to promote clean car racing fun. Away from the high speeds that they used to do back in the 80s and 90s. All done in areas that are closed circuit. Even if the accident was the main reason as to why the club went ghost for all those years, it's still weird for Rockstar to name their racing franchise after a car club originated from the American Car Club a year later after what happened. This is one of the coolest things that you can do in any racing game. In Midnight Club Los Angeles, you have the option to pull over after committing a traffic violation. When you do, the game will cut to a police dash cam and have a police officer walk towards you. Once the officer is almost to your driver window, you have the option to drive off and initiate a police chase. This is one of those rare features that are not present in racing games nowadays. These two things are known about Midnight Club Los Angeles when comparing it to Midnight Club 3, and these are the lack of cars and customization options. These were likely due to the capabilities of the Rage Engine at the time. Rockstar San Diego were basically utilizing the first iteration of the game engine, and this is the best that they were able to create at the time. There are certain vehicles in Midnight Club 3 that you cannot fully customize compared to other vehicles, mainly exotics. Some of it has to do with licensing and other reasons might be creativity on what is there to customize or what is there to design to customize on those vehicles. After beating everyone on Atlanta, Detroit, and San Diego to become the US champ, you will get a Lamborghini Murcielago as a prize vehicle, exactly like this. This is alluding on the fact that out of all the games that Rockstar has made that take place in Los Angeles, or at least in a parody version of the city, Minna Club Los Angeles is the most realistic when it comes to depicting the city. Even if it isn't a 101 replica and a few places had to be changed to be more racing friendly, it's still the most realistic when it comes to featuring landmark places and even featuring real life stores and companies in the game. Regardless if the servers are shut down or not in any system, there has been and still is modding for Midnight Club Los Angeles which typically is stuff like you're seeing right now. Not present in Midnight Club 3 and technically not introduced properly in Midnight Club 2, 
Pink Slip races appeared in Midnight Club Street Racing and Midnight Club Los Angeles. What Pink Slip races are, are races that you and another opponent put their cars on the line and whoever wins gets both cars. And the loser, well, loses their car. The difference between a Midnight Club Street Racing and LA is that in Street Racing, if you lose, you'll get another chance to defeat your opponent and get their car and still keep your car. In Midnight Club Los Angeles, it works as intended. If you win, you get their car. If you lose, you lose your car. Remember, this is a risky bet and it's working as intended, so don't even try to back out of the race during the race because you'll lose your car immediately. But hey, listen, listen. If you want to know a secret on how not to lose your car in desperate situations where nothing goes in your favor, and especially if you're very, very broke in the game. Get better? What? You thought I was going to tell you to turn off your console and thinking that was going to forfeit the race and still keep your car? Man, please! Just get better. Practice some more. Buy a lot of cars and or motorcycles if you have to. And upgrade them. Really upgrade them. Because... If you ever lose your vehicle, you can claim it back for another pink slip race. Same rules apply. Just don't be an idiot and choke the race again, because if you do, that is on you! The PSP version of Midnight Club Los Angeles, Midnight Club LA Remix had two maps, Los Angeles and Tokyo. Tokyo was never seen or even been planned to be released on the console version, so it was a PSP exclusive, and along with the map, it had its own career mode. And to unlock that career mode, you have to beat the LA career mode first and then get a phone call from Toshi. Congratulations on your victory, sir. A considerable achievement. Thanks, man. Who is this? I represent an organization which shares your interest in racing. We'd like to invite you to join us. Uh, okay. Look, um, I don't really need organizing, but you know, thanks for calling. We will gladly pay for your flight to Tokyo. Tokyo? Wait, are you talking about the Midnight Club? I'll arrange for contact information to be sent to you. I hope to see you soon. Whoa, hang on! Huh, how about that? Both Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles had a big soundtrack list. Midnight Club 3 featured 99 songs in the base game, and added 25 more songs in the remix version, giving it a total of 124 songs. Midnight Club Los Angeles featured 97 songs in the base game and added 9 more songs giving it a total of 106 songs. One thing to mention is that on November 9, 2018, Rockstar removed 14 songs from Midnight Club Los Angeles, knocking down the total to a total of 92. This was basically the game's 10th anniversary update when playing the Xbox 360 version on Xbox One or the Series XS. Regardless, these are still some big numbers for a soundtrack list on a racing game. Midnight Club 2 is the first Midnight Club game to introduce these driving technique abilities that will also be seen in Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles. These are Weight Transfer, Slipstream, and Burnout. Weight transfer is where you transfer weight around your vehicle, either being a car or a motorcycle. And weight transfer is very beneficial for motorcycles, especially when you want to win every event with them. With motorcycles, you can pull back and start doing wheelies that allows you to reach your top speed faster, or you can duck down and increases the top speed of your motorcycle. You can also shift your weight to the left or to the right, depending where you're turning with the motorcycle. That way, it makes it easier to turn, and you can use that to your advantage in race events. More things that you can do with weight transfer, you can also control your vehicle in midair, either being a car or a motorcycle. That way, you can control the vehicle in midair and land on all four wheels without crashing down. You can also do two-wheel driving in cars. Either you can drive with the left wheels or the right wheels and get through any tight spaces. Another thing that you can perform with weight transfer in a motorcycle is a nose dive. Doing so when pulling forward and pressing on the brakes allows you to brake faster. Slipstream or draft, you basically get behind another vehicle, wait for a bar to fill up that's above your speedometer, and then use that draft as boost. Burnout allows you to get better acceleration at the start of a race, if you time it perfectly. You can also use this to get back in the race with better acceleration after you crash out from a vehicle an object, or anything that got in your way. These are abilities that are a feature in Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles that you can utilize on race events and on free roam. The abilities consist of Roar, Zone, Aggro, 
and EMP. Midnight Club 3 features three of them that are unlocked to certain categories of vehicles. While Midnight Club LA includes the EMP ability and every ability can be put on on any vehicle that you want. What they do, aggro basically makes you invincible and pushes things out of your way without taking any damage. Roar moves things out of your way and create a clear path for you to go. Zone slows down time and it's very helpful when it comes to situations like dodging traffic or coming into a tight corner without wrecking yourself. When utilizing the EMP and you're near another vehicle, you'll be able to stall them temporarily. And yes, this also can be applied to traffic vehicles and police vehicles. Keep in mind that the police tend to have a shorter span of being affected by the EMP compared to AI cars and traffic vehicles. So use it wisely when it comes to situations and getting into a police chase. I recommend using it when there's a lot of traffic so the police won't get through and come near you and get you. After beating Book in Manette Club Los Angeles, you'll get a business proposition from Carol meaning that you have to pay him a million dollars and become a half owner of the shops that Carol owns in the game. And in return, you will get every car and every performance upgrade and visual upgrade for free. These are Rockstar logo collectibles that you can collect across all three maps in Midnight Club 3. There are a total of 36 logos, 12 for each of the three main maps in the game, and what they unlock are license plates, stickers, and motorcycle riders. Gambala is a tuning company that specifies in vehicle performance, specifically in Porsches, and even in some Ferraris. The company was founded in 1981 by Uwe or Uwe Gambala. Then the company got seized in May of 2010 and filed for bankruptcy after his disappearance from a business trip gone wrong, getting kidnapped by gangsters, and having his body found dead in October of that same year in South Africa. The company was then refounded in 2010 after Andrea Schwartz and Stefan Kobag managed to buy all the assets from Gimbala and the naming rights and bring it out of bankruptcy. And the company's still around today, completely different from what it used to be when Uwe Gimbala was in charge. Midnight Club 3 was released during a time when EA and Porsche had an exclusive deal together to feature Porsches only in Need for Speed. Now, Porsches have been featured in other racing franchises during this time, but the sacrifice was that publishers had to pay a lot of money to not just Porsche, but also to EA to feature Porsches in their games. Rockstar's loophole was to feature Gambala as a substitute, just like what other publishers and developers did with Ruff to substitute Porsche in order to avoid paying EA a lot of money. The same thing is also said for the F355 as Ferrari, even today, isn't a manufacturer that doesn't enjoy vehicle customization, specifically aftermarket customization that isn't their body kits. Midnight Club LA had online functionality from its day of release all the way to May 31st, 2014. The online servers were powered by GameSpy, and GameSpy shut down on that day in May, meaning that you can no longer do anything online on Midnight Club LA, at least on the PS3. On the Xbox 360, however, you can still play online multiplayer as of the recording of this video, even on Xbox One and on the Sirius X and S through backwards compatibility. But remember, it's just online multiplayer. Rate My Ride and the driving test to obtain the Audi R8, those are long gone. Rapper and record executive Burman was featured in Midnight Club 3. Not just his songs were in the game, but he was also in the game as a character called Baby. You wanna watch out for this girl Vanessa? She a real man hater, homie. XXII double X double I 22 is a channel that's known for making video game concept trailers. They're all concept trailers, and Midnight Club is one of those franchises that they're well known for. They're all pretty cool concepts that we all wish they were real, but unfortunately they're not. Midnight Club 2 is the only Midnight Club game to ever be released on the PC. The SLF 450X is a vehicle from Midnight Club 2 that you can unlock after completing the entire game 100%, and it's the only vehicle in the franchise to have active aero and to have afterburners. Here's also a cool thing about the 450X. If you use the cheat code Immortal, you will unlock the usage of weapons. 
And when using them, you will basically have the Midnight Club equivalent to the Vigilante from GTA Online. Midnight Club Street Racing is the only Midnight Club game to ever be released on a Nintendo gaming system, specifically the Game Boy Advance developed by Destination Software. Midtown Madness was another racing series that Rockstar San Diego, Angel Studios at the time, developed. They have only developed the first two games of the series, and in a way, Midtown Madness is the precursor to Midnight Club. When you have significant damage in your car in Midnight Club Los Angeles, and after finishing a race in a tournament or series, you will have the option to repair your car, and when you accept and go into the next event, you will see your car to have replacement parts in prime color, replacing damaged parts that you had in the previous event. This is a feature that you will find in Midnight Club 3 in Los Angeles when you're in the pause menu. Once you're in the pause menu in both games, you just move around with the right joystick and you'll get to move the camera around at different angles and see your car. In Midnight Club Los Angeles, you get to actually take pictures with that feature, meaning you can move the camera around and post in a certain angle that you want and take a picture. Once you've taken a picture, it'll be saved into a gallery which later on you can upload to your social club, something that you can no longer do as of 2014. These are yellow barrels containing the Rockstar logo that are scattered all over the map in Midnight Club Los Angeles that you can collect. What these barrels do is that when collecting every 10 barrels, you will unlock a cheat code. The cheat codes are having a limit of nitrous, become invincible, meaning Whenever you crash into a car, wall, or even into a gas station pump, you'll never damage out. Using the special abilities as many times as you want, having top-down view, having no police in the map, and whenever you get busted, no fines. You're not gonna pay anything. There are a total of 60 barrels, and they're only scattered in the mainland of Midnight Club Los Angeles pre-South Central DLC. I should also mention this about the cheat codes specifically the last two cheat codes. If you're gonna use the no finds cheat code, don't use the no police cheat code because then what will be the point of having no finds when there's no police? What this is is a 2003 Cadillac 16 and it's a luxurious concept car with a V16 engine. And to obtain this car, you have to achieve 100% completion in the main career mode of Midnight Club 3. Rembug is a cheat code from Midnight Club 2 that basically unlocks everything in the game and you can play all the cars that have been unlocked with the cheat code in arcade mode. And that also goes using weapons in every vehicle. You may have seen gameplay videos or may have seen anyone in online lobbies driving around in an Audi R8. Or even in single player if you're doing a race and a racer by the name of Doc is in it with that same vehicle. Or even another racer by the name of Otto driving that same Audi R8 but modified to his styling. The car is in the game but you cannot purchase it in game or obtain it as downloadable content. It was never even released with a complete edition. However, it did appear in the PSP version of Midnight Club LA. All you have to do there is just be book and become the city champ and the Audi R8 will be unlocked. But there was only one way to obtain it back in the day from 2008 to 2014 and that was through a driving test. What that driving test was basically consisted of 12 challenges on the Rockstar Social Club that you have to complete to obtain the car. What those challenges consisted you to do were getting a million dollars, drive for 5,000 miles, win 25 races in a row, two wheel distance in a car for 10 miles, wheelie distance in a motorcycle for 15 miles, cruise around for 25 hours, use the special abilities 5,000 times, have a total jump distance of 200 miles, have a total of 350 career wins, destroy 250 cars, hit opponents 1,000 times, and hit objects 10,000 times. Once again, the car was only obtainable from 2008 to 2014, as the servers got shut down in that year for both versions of the game. And even if you started doing the challenges before the servers got shut down in 2014, and you still haven't completed the challenges, there's still no chance that you can obtain the car after that. Unless if, I don't know, you steal somebody, I mean, get a save file from the internet and use that to get the car. Which I don't blame you if you do, since that is the only option that there is left nowadays. Oh, and some say that you can still obtain the car even after all these years by being a lunatic and keeping track of all the challenges manually. I'm not saying that you are, but if you can prove that it's possible, video and everything, 
then I believe you. Other than that, I said what I said. This is a feature that has been in every Midnight Club game since the second game. It was going to appear in Street Racing, but due to time constraints, it had to be removed. Race Editor allows you to create your own race in any Midnight Club game from the second game to Los Angeles. And you can play your own creator races in online, something that you can no longer do today. At least on any Midnight Club that's not Midnight Club Los Angeles on the Xbox 360, One, and Series XS. This is nothing new to Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles, but the first two Midnight Club games feature real-life aftermarket companies. Or at least their logos were featured on two games that did not feature any type of licensing that's not things like music or real life companies featured in the game as advertisements. This is, you can say, an ability that you have as a character in Midnight Club 2 being able to read every character's as mine. Despite not being shown on screen and not have any speaking dialogue as a protagonist, you're able to read the minds of every character or what they think of you, even if they don't know it. This is a unique and interesting vehicle from Midnight Club Street Racing. The Zender Type S is the only vehicle in the entire franchise that's a hover vehicle. And to obtain it, you have to reach 100% completion of the entire game. And no, it's not the best vehicle of the entire game either. It has terrible handling. It may not seem like it because of its appearance, but the Luso or Lusso at sea being based on the Toyota Risto and Lexus GS300 is one of the fastest cars in Midnight Club 2, both in cruising speed and with nitrous. Specifically 226 miles an hour, 363 kilometers an hour in cruising speeds, and 249 miles an hour, 402 kilometers an hour with nitrous. What's known about this Lexus being so fast, it's because it's heavily modified, but it's unknown exactly what was modified. Despite being the only protagonist in the entire Midnight Club franchise to have a physical appearance, technically second if you want to count the player from Midnight Club 2 when riding a motorcycle, but also the first to have a speaking role. However, nobody knows his name. Midnight Club LA's protagonist is basically like GTA 3's protagonist, Claude. Except at the time, nobody knew his name until Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Hello, Claude, baby. and a Rockstar Q&A. But when attempting to look up the question online on what is the player's real name in Midnight Club Los Angeles, chances are you will get Judas as a result, or part of a result. Now, Judas is a name that anyone can have and be named Judas as their first name, but it's commonly known in Christianity to be the person to betray Jesus Christ. Now, Judas was mentioned once in Midnight Club Los Angeles by book. There he is, Judas, the ex-apostle. And because of that, there is a confliction about the name Judas. Some people took that as the player's actual name, but others could also take that as the fact that Book called him Judas because the player refused to help him and not getting arrested after a race. Book! Five over! Over us, man! Get out of here! Hey, you gotta help me out, man! I'm in some serious heat here! Are you crazy? You're all over me too, man! What do you want me to do? Have you forgotten what I've done for you? You be nothing without me! You owe me, man! Look, I love to talk, but I gotta shake these fools! You're supposed to be the hot shot driver. Deal with it yourself. I'm telling you, if you don't help me out now, it's over. We got him. Cut you off. You're out of your mind, Book. Therefore, Book sees the player as a traitor. And since Judas was just used as a term for traitor, we now know what his real name is. Or perhaps we do. See, this video from Reggie just happened to appear while I'm editing this video, and I just have to fit this in somehow. You wanna know what the player's mama calls him? What's your name, QJ? My mama calls me Matthew, but you can call me anything you want. And I'm just shaking my head right now because people on Wikipedia STILL want to call him Judas. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Y'all better fix that name right now, now we know the truth. And hey, I don't blame you if you never knew about this. Neither did I. I never played the PSP version and probably you didn't. And if you did, 
chances are the name flew over your head and you never pay attention to it. Oh, and if you're gonna mention about Marcus, see the player referred himself as that name as a nickname, not his actual name. I would try to find some footage that proves that point, I just can't find it anywhere, so there's that. I mean, it might or it might not be Matthew, since that could just be an easter egg to the voice actor himself that voices the player, but hey, that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Let's just move on with the video. It's not like Rockstar's gonna clarify this like 14-15 years later. These are slang terms that you'll see in the menus of Midnight Club Street Racing. These terms will either be below or next to a white text of the main option in the menus. And depending what menu screen you're in, they will also match that same color. Before Midnight Club Street Racing came out in 2000, Rockstar shut down Times Square to get the iconic cover for the game. The RSMC-15 is a card that you unlock in Minute Club 2 after beating Shing that resembles to a Nissan Fairlady Z, or the 350Z, the concept variant of the 350. The four letters of the name stands for Rockstar Midnight Club. Rockstar San Diego had their own gaming engine to develop the Midnight Club games called Age, Angel Game Engine. Around 2004, EA bought out Criterion Games and the Renderware gaming engine which made Rockstar to develop their own proprietary gaming engine based out of age called Rage, Rockstar Advanced Gaming Engine. Midnight Club LA was one of the first few, and it is the only racing game to utilize the Rage engine. One area that Midnight Club Los Angeles struggled a lot compared to the other games was marketing. Take-Two Interactive and Rockstar Games didn't market the game as much back in 2008, especially during a time of the financial crisis, to basically market the game and give the word out there that Midnight Club Los Angeles exists. Every Midnight Club game has their own set of characters, but out of all the Midnight Club games, Midnight Club 3 has the least amount. At least in terms of how the characters look like. See, in Midnight Club Street Racing, you pretty much have a picture for every opponent that you face against. In Midnight Club 2, there is a CG cutscene for almost every character that you encounter with. Midnight Club Los Angeles has in-game cutscenes, meaning that you can see every character. At least the characters that are important to the story. Midnight Club 3 basically only has the mechanics that you meet in each city. Aside from motorcycle riders that don't really do much and they're just basically a skin, you don't get to see the characters that drive cars, which is majority of all the rivals that you face against. Here's a cool bit of detail that Midnight Club 2 has, and it's when watching a cutscene of any character that you encounter with, you'll have vehicle stats underneath the vehicle that they're driving. Sure, there's vehicle stats on the main menu of the game for each vehicle, but here they tell you in detail what each vehicle has under the hood. GameSpy are the servers that Midnight Club 2, 3, and LA utilize to have online functionality for multiplayer. It's no longer possible to play multiplayer as of May 2014 as the servers for those three games have been long since shut down. Officially and specifically for the PS2 servers for Midnight Club 2 and 3, Midnight Club LA servers for the PS3, the PC servers for Midnight Club 2, the Midnight Club 3 and LA servers for the PSP, and the servers for Midnight Club 2 and 3 for the OG Xbox. Again, these were the official servers that you can play multiplayer for those three games. There are workarounds nowadays that you can do to play multiplayer in any of those three games, or at least for just Midnight Club 2 and 3 on the PS2, Xbox, and PC. When driving a motorcycle in Midnight Club 2 and you idle for a certain period of time, the player will turn around and flip you the bird, telling you that you're number one, because you're not moving. We all know Grand Theft Auto V and its three main protagonists, and we all know all three have their own special abilities. Particularly Franklin, he has the ability to slow down time when he's in a vehicle, thus making him a lot faster in a vehicle and even making it easier to maneuver around objects in other traffic vehicles. That ability was derived from the time zone ability from Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles. This is referring to the fact that even in Midnight Club Los Angeles didn't do so good financially, at least in the eyes of Rockstar and Take 2, it still managed to print a lot of copies from 2008 to 2014, despite the lack of marketing.
Every Minute Club game had their own website that basically shows off the game, like pictures, videos, anything that you can think of about the game that's gonna come out in that year. However, all of these websites ran on Adobe Flash, and if you already know, as of January 2021, you can't access these websites anymore as Adobe Flash is basically gone. But if you want to know what they were like, I'll have a video in the description from ShinyOn that shows you what the websites basically look like. 619 Customs is the name of the first shop that you visit in Midnight Club 3, owned by Oscar. The name 619 is a reference to San Diego's area code, 619. Much like in Midnight Club 2, when driving a motorcycle and idling for a certain amount of time, the player will turn around and be like, why aren't you not moving, what's the holdup? These are pink auroras that are scattered on both maps of Midnight Club Street Racing. There are a total of six, three for each map, and what they do is for New York, you will get different variants of the taxi cab. For London, you will unlock the Karuma along with its two other variants. This is an off-road buggy that you can unlock in Midnight Club Street Racing. This is a reference to Smuggler's Run, another franchise that Rockstar San Diego, Angel Studios at the time, worked on. And if you have a save file for Smuggler's Run, you can automatically unlock the buggy. But only on the PS2 version because it's not available in the GBA and it can only be used on arcade mode. Here's Haley. Here's Android 18 from Dragon Ball. They look alike. She is just a walking reference. Midnight Club LA features several champions that you have to beat in the game. There's a total of 9 champions, which 5 of those are class specific. From exotic, tuner, muscle, motorcycle, and even luxury. You will be rewarded a trophy or achievement once you defeat those 5 champions. And what's interesting about those trophies or achievements is the logos that they have on them. The logos contain vehicles that exist in real life, some of which that are not in the game. Like the Tuner Champ and Exotic Champ logos, both of which contain a Toyota Supra and a Chrysler ME412 respectively. Both cars appeared in Magnet Club 3 but not in Los Angeles, and it is unknown that they were meant to appear in Los Angeles as there really isn't any specific mentions in the game files of those two cars. As for the other three, you can make your own guesses as to what they are. I have my own guesses, but I don't know if they're correct. Joint Chiefs was basically a CD that features songs that were going to be in Midnight Club 3. Specifically some songs, not all of them make the cut, as a way to promote the game. Think of this like a mixtape that features about 13 songs that you can listen to. This is a trophy or achievement that you can get in Grand Theft Auto Online that references Midnight Club. To get that achievement or trophy, you basically have to win 5 online races with any custom vehicle. Grand Theft Auto 4 has 2 achievements or trophies that you can get in multiplayer that references the Midnight Club. To get Top the Midnight Club, you have to win 20 different type of standard races. It does not matter what the type of vehicle is. And to get Join the Midnight Club, you have to win a race without taking too much damage with damage enabled. These achievements or trophies are still able to be obtained as of 2022, at least on console. This was a limited edition version of the Air Jordan 87 that was made in collaboration between Rockstar Games and Nike back in 2008 to promote Midnight Club Los Angeles. The shoes came in in an acrylic custom made box with the Midnight Club Los Angeles logo along with a copy of the game. All of them valued at $380. These shoes will cost a lot more than what they were worth back then nowadays given that only 40 pairs exist in the entire world. And that's not saying if anything happened to these pairs of shoes by the people that got them that will make them more rare. It's not that kind of censorship like GTA San Andreas released in Japan, but it's more of the Kanji Tets featured in every Midnight Club game, or at least specifically in street racing in LA. The Tets translates to Wangang, which is a highway in Tokyo, or even the Wangang Midnight series, which also uses the same text. And, because it's copyrighted, that is the reason why that text is omitted in the Japanese releases of the games. Rate My Ride was a feature that allowed you to basically buy other people's cars, rate their cars, and even their liveries, and even download their liveries. Which liveries can consist of replicas of other existing cars and other medias, other games, and original designs, even if they're too creative. The feature no longer exists as of 2014 for both the PS3 and Xbox 360. Rockstar Games used to host their own tournaments in Midnight Club Los Angeles, which is basically as the already existing tournaments in the game, just online. 
Their last tournament was in April 2009 called the Pizza Hut South Central Tournament. The winner of that tournament would get a $500 certificate or gift card for Pizza Hut in which they can spend that money on a year supply of pizza. A Midnight Club 5 was meant to happen back then. After Midnight Club Los Angeles, development roughly started between 2008 to 2009, but then it got cancelled in 2010 because of poor working conditions at Rockstar San Diego. Conditions were very horrible to work at Rockstar San Diego at the time, from working almost every day of the week for 12 hours, poor management decisions, people getting fired or even quitting at their own will because of how bad it was. And that also meant the Midnight Club team, which basically got dismantled at that time, and we haven't seen a new game ever since. And for the ones that got left over, they pretty much got shifted to other projects like Red Dead Redemption or GTA, specifically and mainly Grand Theft Auto Online, since Rockstar likes to milk that game in particular and pump out updates on a yearly basis, it halts Midnight Club in a sense of customization and cars that they add in GTA Online. In other words, and probably in their eyes, we got GTA, why the hell do we need to make another Midnight Club? These are loading screens from Midnight Club 3 that went unused because they contain music that were supposed to be in the game, but ended up being cut from the final release. I would play them, but I'm either trying to get paid or not wanting this video to get blocked anywhere. So I'll link you a video in the description of these loading screens with the music that were not in the game. If you stop and sit idle in certain areas in Midnight Club Los Angeles, or go to a gas station and don't do anything, you'll get to hear some hidden dialogue lines that you normally don't get to hear. Take a listen to some of these. Thank you. 
Now, I can't give you a definitive answer as to what is the backstory behind those dialogue lines, but I can tell you it's basically the typical life of a teenager living in LA. This is more of a theory rather than anything that is factual, but it's about the two maps of Midnight Club LA and GTA 5, and Midnight Club LA's map serves as a blueprint or a big hint that GTA 5 was going to take place in Los Angeles or in its parody version, Los Santos. Both maps are not exactly the same to one another, but it's the location that's the same. And sure, GTA 4 had its own hints that GTA 5 was gonna take place in Los Santos, but Midnight Club LA was just right there that GTA 5 was going to be in an LA-based parody city. What you're seeing here is basically the beta intro for Midnight Club 2. It's not much different from the one that we ended up getting in the final release, but Two notable differences are that it's slightly longer and all the vehicles here almost perfectly resemble their real life counterparts. Unlike in Midnight Club 2 and the LA Remix PSP port where you can drive to the airport, you cannot do that in the HD version of Midnight Club Los Angeles, even if the map goes as south as South Central. But you can still catch a glimpse of one of the towers of the airport. Shortly before Midnight Club LA was released, Rockstar teamed up with Pizza Hut to create a giveaway. The giveaway consisted of entering a Pizza Hut's website to register to win a Celine S302 Extreme, which was worth about $100,000 and was customized to look exactly as the one seen in the game's cover. There were various cut vehicles in Midnight Club Los Angeles, but majority of them in the game files are just text or no complete models of them. However, there is one particular car that was cut late in development and can still be brought back in the game with reverse engineering, the Nissan GTR R35. And it's the most complete cut vehicle in the entire game as it can be spawned in with its own model, interior camera, and its own customization as well. Licensing was probably the cause as to why the vehicle got cut in the first place. There are these Say Sorry Be Nice movie posters that can be found in Midnight Club Street Racing, or at least in the Times Square area in New York, that feature the co-founder and president of Rockstar Games, Sam Hauser. As far as for the movie, it's fictional, made up by Rockstar. There was a trailer for the PSP version of Manic Club 3 mentioning about downloadable content. However, there was never any DLC for the PSP port. What probably would have been, it would have likely been the remix content that we ended up getting on the PS2 and the OG Xbox. Midnight Club Street Racing was supposed to have three maps instead of two. The third map was supposed to be Tokyo, but it ended up being scrapped because of time constraints. Midnight Club 3 contains some interesting cut content that never ended up being in the final game. Some of it includes BMWs, Maybach wheels, cut music, and even a sketch of a character that went unused. Like, we probably would have got characters and personalities from the second game into the third game. There was a commercial for Midnight Club 2 that played back in the day. At the end of the commercial, it will show Midnight Club 2 with an M rating. Now, keep in mind, this was a commercial air back in around the time the Midnight Club 2 was supposed to come out in 2003, not a commercial made by someone else on the internet. Keep in mind that there has never been a Midnight Club game to ever be rated below everyone 10 plus, and above T for Team, but it's weird seeing an M rating on a Midnight Club game, and it's unknown if it was intended to have an M rating or not, and if it was, what would have cost to have that rating in the first place? It probably would have been with the fact that you can run over pedestrians in the game, but if Midnight Club Street Racing did it first and still maintain a T rating, there was likely more things in Midnight Club 2 that probably would have given an M rating than just running over pedestrians. This is a glitch that happens, but also could be considered as an easter egg in Midnight Club 3. There are certain events in the career mode, or even in arcade mode if you choose to race with no opponents, that a red Dodge Viper is gonna appear somewhere. The car itself is a 2000 Viper GTS-R, and it's exactly the one that's seen in the game, just without the stripes and it's completely stocked with no modifications done to it. In terms of being a glitch, it was likely speculated that there were supposed to be racers doing their own race on top of your race. 
if that makes any sense. It was basically to make the city feel more alive and vivid, but that idea ultimately got scrapped and this is the leftover of it. In terms of being an easter egg, you can compare this exact GTSR without the stripes to another vehicle from Midnight Club 2 from a certain character, DICE. DICE drives the parody version of the GTSR, Jersey XS, same color and everything. So it's basically could be considered as an easter egg to him. There were going to be ATVs and dirt bikes in Midnight Club 3 as shown in the game files. However, there is no specific mention of what manufacturer or what kind of model of a dirt bike or ATV was going to be in the game. Now, how can Tokyo, San Diego, Detroit, and Atlanta be suitable for dirt bikes and ATVs as none of those maps have off-road areas? You may be asking. Well... You don't need off-road to... Midnight Club 2 has some interesting pieces of cut content. There's an unused prop for a police vehicle, mainly for the Los Angeles area that's based on a 92-97 Crown Victoria but it has no collision, no wheels, and no textures. There's also a list of unused traffic vehicles, and the, we were supposed to have three playable vehicles that ended up being cut, two of which being the Crusader and the Vampire, and the only thing that remains out of those two are texture files. The SLF 400 is a cut vehicle in Midnight Club 2 that didn't appear due to time constraints. In other words, Rockstar didn't have enough time to include this vehicle in. The car is similar to a Pagani Zonda, and it's unknown on who would have driven this car, either an existing character in the game, or a completely new character. Detroit was a city that was featured in Midnight Club 3. However, there were more mentions the city was going to be featured beyond Midnight Club 3. Starting in the game files of Midnight Club Los Angeles, it was rumored that the city was to be featured in the game as downloadable content. That basically we were supposed to get more than just the South Central map expansion in terms of going places. It was also rumored that it was supposed to be the main city for Midnight Club 5. However, we never ended up getting either of those two things. There isn't much to say about what was cut from Midnight Club's tree racing. However, there were mentions in the game files about a tractor that was supposed to be in the game, but ended up being cut as probably wouldn't fit with the theme of street racing and fast cars. A cut police truck that basically got replaced by the meter maid, and the Amada Crescendo that's based on the Nissan Skyline being a separate vehicle based on some unused textures. There was also another cut vehicle which was supposed to be part of the Amada class group, which was the Fiorenza, which was based on some kind of Ferrari, unknown which model at the time was supposed to be based off. Honda has made their presence in the first two Midnight Club games as parody versions of their real-life counterparts. When Midnight Club 3 transitioned from unlicensed vehicles to licensed vehicles, no Honda or Acura vehicle ever appeared in Midnight Club 3 and Los Angeles. However, there were mentions in the game files for both games that there were supposed to be Honda and Acura vehicles. The reason why they didn't make the cut in those two games was because this was around the time where Honda refused to be in any racing game that features police, and Midnight Club as a franchise has featured police in every game, even if majority of the games don't have much emphasis on the police like Los Angeles. Midnight Club Los Angeles has quite an interesting list that contains in the game files of what was cut from the final game. Some of the cut content contains sound clips and even text files for what cars should have been in the game, which include the Gimbala Avalanche GT, Ferrari 360 Spider Modena, Porsche Cayman, a Ford F-150, and even a Mercury Cyclone. Not to mention that some motorcycles were cut from the final game, like the Honda VFR 800 and the Yamaha YZF R6, and even some choppers. A traffic car variant of the Dodge Ram SRT 10 was also cut. Some big additions were also cut from the final game, drag racing being one of them, as you can technically still do it with your friends online, but it's not the same as it would have been if there was a proper game mode for it. Another one was a Tokyo map for the HD Midnight Club LA. You can still go to Tokyo in the PSP version, as it is an updated version of the Midnight Club 3 map, but we were supposed to go to Tokyo actually on the HD Midnight Club LA. There are areas in the Midnight Club Los Angeles map that have these don't use it yet black boxes, 
These are basically a development oversight of placeholders that developers never got around to either get rid of or put something that were supposed to be in those don't use it yet black boxes. Like any textures, objects, anything in particular. Hey guys, Steven here, with his finely tuned vehicle that's actually his mom's vehicle. And I'm here to tell you that I'd appreciate it if you share this video, like this video, and comment what you thought of the video. It took me so many tries to get this video together and put it out to the world. I'd be impressed if you actually watched this video to the end, because you either had rebreathers or you had a scuba suit with you to get down to the abyss, or you're Aquaman for some reason and you're just built different. Or you just probably skipped to the end of the video, but hey, you're here anyways. Quickly, I'd like to say I'm sorry if I didn't give you any credit. I didn't think of you throughout this entire process for months. So, hopefully we can resolve something out. And I probably made different mistakes, so point them out if you have to. So, yeah, I gotta go now. I gotta... Tune this vehicle because you don't know how hard it is to get this emu to run properly with my racing skills that nobody can top. Even if it means to perfect the double clutch that I keep messing up every time on my mom's car. No, but seriously, thank you for watching this video. This really took a lot of time to put together, revise, and just get this video out to the world. And I'll appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe if you're new and comment what you thought of the video. Do the things that I mentioned about pointing out mistakes and you have a problem that I didn't credit you with anything, mention it in the comments and we hopefully we can resolve it out eventually and I'm sorry. And see you in the next one. Have a nice day or evening. Yeah.